Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Reading again from On Christian Leadership by A.W. Tozer. Some of you will know his name. I quote him often. Um, I, I love the fact, here's just a couple of paragraphs of his uh, biography in the front here. Aiden Wilson Tozer. I love that. First name, A-I-D-E-N. Aiden Wilson Tozer. Born April 21, 18. 1897. That goes back a ways, huh? On a small farm among the spiny ridges of western Pennsylvania. Within a few short years, Tozer, as he preferred to be called, would earn the reputation and title of a 20th century prophet. While he was 15 years old, Tozer's family moved to Akron, Ohio, and one afternoon as he walked home from his job at Goodyear, he overheard a street preacher say, If you don't know how to be saved, just call on God. And when he got home, he climbed the narrow stairway to the attic where, heeding the preacher's advice, Tozer was launched into a lifelong pursuit of God. And yes, that's a play on words for the title of one of the books he wrote. Um, This particular author is uh, Ron Egger. He goes on to say, in 1919, without formal education, he was called to pastor a small storefront church in Nutter Fort, West Virginia. That humble beginning thrust he and his wife, Ada, into a 44-year ministry with the Christian and Missionary Alliance. And that's a, a... Protestant uh, stream of the church and uh, that he was a part of. 31 of those years were spent at Chicago's Southside Alliance Church. The congregation, captivated by Tozer's preaching, grew from 80 to 800. His humor, written and spoken, has been compared to that of Will Rogers, honest and homespun. And a lot of you probably don't know who Will Rogers is, but honest and homespun is a good way to describe his humor. Congregations would one moment be swept by gales of laughter and the next sit in a holy hush. Tozer's forte, though, was his prayer life. And that's what I want to read in just a second, a little bit about that. But this particular bit of the biography f- focuses in on that and um, and says that his prayer life, so important, often found him walking the aisles of a sanctuary or lying face down on the floor. Tozer biographer James L. Snyder notes that, quote, his preaching as well as his writings were but extensions of his prayer life. An earlier biographer and confidant, David J. Fant, wrote, quote, he spent more time on his knees than at his desk. Wow. Tozer's final years of pastoral ministry were at Avenue Road Church in Toronto, Canada. On May 12, 1963, his pursuit of God was realized when he died of a heart attack at age 66. In a small cemetery in Akron, Ohio, his tombstone bears this simple epitaph. A man of God. I love that. Well, let's read uh, this particular selection I have for you. begins with a a couple of verses from Psalm 116 and then uh, some of Tozer's thoughts on prayer and communing with God. Psalm 116 verses 1 and 2, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear unto me, Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. That's that's amazing. I love the Lord because he heard my voice. Think of all the folks that don't believe in God and still cry out to, I guess, an impersonal universe, uh, never knowing if they're ever heard or just screaming in rage and anger into the darkness. Again, not knowing if they're ever heard. And here the psalmist says, I love the Lord because he's heard my voice and my supplications, the cries of my heart, the longings of my heart, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, will I call upon him as long as I live? Let's let's be that intentional. Yeah. And Tozer certainly was. Listen to this. Tozer writes, I think that some of the greatest prayer is prayer where you don't say one single word or ask for anything. Oh, that's great. Now, God does answer, and he does give us what we ask for. That's plain. Nobody can deny that unless he denies the scriptures. 
But that's only one aspect of prayer. And it's not even the important aspect. Sometimes I go to God and say, quote, God, if thou dost never answer another prayer while I live on this earth, I will still worship thee as long as I live and in the ages to come for what thou hast done already. And Tozer goes on to say, God's already put me so far in debt that if I were to live one million millenniums, I couldn't pay him for what he's done for me. <laughs> That's just, I, I, I love to be overwhelmed by that kind of ponderance, that kind of thought. Um, whether, you know, somebody like Tozer or, or reading from the prayers of the Puritans or whatever uh, the case may be, but to, just occasionally to stop and to think, to ourselves that this is, the, this is the infinite God who created everything out of nothing that is hearing our prayer. Um, this, you know, this is a God whose love for you is so great. It is, it's like Niagara Falls coming down on top of one single little flower. That's how the landslide of God's love toward you and for me is. It's really amazing. So he says, he has, God has already put me in, in so far in debt that if I were to live one million millenniums, I couldn't pay him back for what he's done for me. We go to God as we send a boy to a grocery store with a long written list. God, give me this, give me this, give me this. And our gracious God often does give us what we want. But I think God is disappointed because we make him to be no more than a source of what we want. And that's, mm, that's that kind of is humbling in a way, isn't it? When you start to think about that. Some of you are parents and you, you know you love it so much when your kids come to you and ask. Uh, either for things or for your comfort or for, uh, they might have a question that they would like for you to give them an answer to. Uh, you just love it that they come to you though. That's, that's what's really beautiful and wonderful. Sometimes disappointing though, when you feel like you're, you're simply being manipulated because they think of you as uh, their parental ATM <laughs> or whatever. But we go to God as we send a boy to a grocery store with a long written list. Give me this, give me this, give me this. And our gracious God often does give us what we want. But I think God is disappointed because we make him to be no more than a source of what we want. Even our Lord Jesus is presented too often much as, quote, someone who will meet your need, end quote. Tozer's on to something here. I think it's... It's to see God as he really is, not just as the, the sort of spiritual genie lamp, you know, in a lamp, um, not just as uh, Francis Schaeffer would say, the vending machine in the sky. Much more than that, yeah. That's the throbbing heart of modern evangelism, he says. You're in need, and Jesus will meet your need. He's the need meter. Well, he is that indeed. But Tozer says... Ah, he's infinitely more than that. <laughs> oh, just to stop and think about that for a few minutes. That he himself is what we're really longing for. That's kind of mind blowing. And when you think about it, all forms of love, even our earthly forms of love, what we're really looking for um, is to be known and to be loved, isn't it? Yeah. And I think most of our fears that break our interpersonal relationships, most of our fears are about we're afraid that if somebody finds this out or that out about us, they're not going to love us. And yet here's God's love. Like millions and millions and millions of gallons of water descending over Niagara Falls every single minute <laughs> just to water one blade of grass, one little daisy, one little rose, whatever 
whatever kind of plant you are or I am, right? That's how much he loves us. Oh, that's really profound. So is he want us to come to him with our needs? Of course he does. He invites us to do that. Does he want us to come to him uh, when we're sad, when we're lonely, when we're brokenhearted? Of course he does. He wants all of that. But Tozer here is making the point that uh, sometimes we need to go before him for his sake, just to be with him, just to know him, just to spend time communing with him. We have far too much of a consumer mentality when it comes to God. We think of him as the source, the vending machine in the sky, like Schaefer would say. Well, he closes with a prayer, which I think is really succinct. Perhaps it'll be the prayer of your heart and my heart today as well. Father, forgive me for so often just coming to you with my grocery list. You've been so faithful. You've given me so much. You've blessed me so richly. I realize my incredible debt to you, and I simply want to worship at your feet today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.